Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So here we need to prove the following trigonometric identity. So before we do this video, we need to make sure that we have, um, you know, complete knowledge on trigonometry at least, and at least all the identities. So first things first, looking at the expression, we have sine 2x here and we have a cos 2x. So we need to know our double angle properties, okay? So just a quick note, what are double angles? So we can say that sine 2x itself can be expanded to two times the sine x multiplied by cos x, okay? So two lots of them. Whereas cos 2x can be expanded in a multiple ways. So we'll leave it as it. Actually, to put the more general expression, it's just the difference between cos squared x and sine squared x. But these can be rearranged, of course, based on the sine squared plus cos squared rule. Now, one useful trick I recommend for any proving um, system is to always convert every single term here to sines and cosines here. Yeah? I'll show you why in the end. So right at the bottom here, I'll always do a triple equal sign. And on the left hand side, I'll convert to, to sine cos and the right sine cos. So let's look at the right. Tan x, we know it should always be is the same as sine x over cos x. Cos 2x, again, could be anything, but we're going to stick with cos squared version, yeah? Just for the time being. So until we can see where we're going with the left hand side. Now, on the left-hand side, if we expand this, so sine 2x only has one definition, thankfully, so it'll be 2 sine x cos x minus tan x would be sine x over cos x. Okay, so far so good. So hopefully my handwriting improves. <laughs> now, let's have a go, yeah? What do we have here? So, let's move on to the very, very first step here. So we can continue with the step we did here on the very first step. So this can therefore be exactly as written, two sine x cos x minus sine x over cos x. Now notice how they combined every term. So let's combine the terms. Here. So we need to, we re, so we need to realize that everything is over cos here. So perhaps we need to multiply up and down on the first term here. There's two sine x by cos up and down. So we should have two sine x cos x because there's an extra cos x would be cos x squared all over cos x. And now minus sine x over cos x. All right, not so bad so far. Okay, so next thing, what's going to be next? So now we can combine the terms here. So everything will be over cos x. So we're going to have two sine x cos squared x minus sine x all over whoops all over give me a second oh god it's hard to do that cos x now before we get to this find this last step here we need to observe so here they somehow go cos squared minus sine squared so looking over here let's factorize the sine x for now Okay, because sine x seems to be outside a bracket with cos x. So factorizing sine x, what do we get? So we get um, doo -doo -doo, 2. No, we don't. So we get sine x outside. Inside the bracket, we're left with 2 times cos squared x minus 1. Uh -huh. Okay, excellent. Now, <laughs> I, we've actually got a solution. So one thing to know. One of the, two, the other equations for cos 2x is this. So we've got cos squared x minus sine squared x. If we let sine squared become 1 minus cos squared, we will actually get 2 cos squared x minus 1. So yes, guys, this term right here is actually cos 2x. And that's it. We've proven it. And then we can finally say, therefore, this would become this term. And finally, this can be rearranged to be tan x cos 2x and that's it guys this is my shortcut done so recap always convert everything into sines and cosines yeah always convert them sines and cos because the reason why this will make your life hell lot easy but anyway that's it for now and um, i'll see you up on part b okay ciao okay here we are part b so now we need to solve between the ranges of 0 and 360 the following equation. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that this is almost identical to part A's solution. For part A, we had a very similar expression. The only difference is, is that the left side was identical to tan x cos 2x. So what's this telling us? This is basically telling us that the left-hand side was identical, but 
that is identical to the right side. So we could actually assume that this whole side can be rewritten as tan x cos 2x. The reason why is because we cannot actually solve this. Or maybe we can, but it's just very long winding and difficult. Now, doing this, we can instantly notice that instead of um, looking at both sides, we can instantly notice that they both have a tan x, which can be cancelled out, and we'll be left with just two terms, a 3 sin x and a cos 2x. Okay? So, let's have a look here. So this means we're going to be left with on the left-hand side. So let's just rewrite again, actually, for the sake of it. Tan x cos 2x, and this is equal to 3 tan x sin x cancelling out terms so let me just quickly cancel these out so this goes and um, this goes okay so now we're left with da, 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 cos 2x equals 3 sin x okay now you can't do much with sin x but cos 2x is a double angle so let's rewrite this into the other property so the other double angles we had so we solved the previous two cos 2x was um, cos squared minus sine squared. We can, it can also be re rewritten as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So this is another version of um, the, cos, the double angle of cos 2x. So let's replace cos 2x here with this sine squared x version. So therefore we're going to have, let's have a look, 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and this is equal to 3 sine x. And that's it. So let's... let's Put everything on one side, so it's going to look like a quadratic in, in terms of sine x, okay? So plus and 2 sine squared across and adding 1, we're going to be left with positive 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 1, and this is equal to 0. And that's it, guys. And just to make it, if you're unsure, just let sine squared x be y, so we're going to have 2y squared plus 3y minus 1 equals 0. And now we just factorize as, as normal. So, factorizing this, you can put 2y here, and you can put y here. So, this will guarantee a 2y squared. And now let's try. So, the only, po the only possibility is to get 1 would be multiplying 1 twice. So, let's just put 1 here and 1 here. To get plus 3y, let's see. Nope, not possible. So, this means we might need to use the quadratic formula, it seems. Hmm, too bad. I, thought, I actually thought we can do this in one go. Let me see if everything is correct. Yeah, everything's correct. So, all right, so let's get a new page. So, quadratic formula is so 2y squared plus 3y minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, using quadratic, we're going to have y equals. So, the formula, we probably know the formula by heart anyway, so I'll just go ahead and do it here. Yeah? Minus 3 plus minus the square root. So, 3 squared would be 9. Minus 4 times a times c, so it'd be minus plus 8 over 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so this seems to be the, the solution, yeah? Yeah, that makes sense, because this 9 plus a is a prime number. Okay, so therefore your two solutions for y is going to be, for sine x, because y sine x is going to be minus 3 plus minus root 17 over 4. Now, let's have a look. So... I'm not sure if you get one, two solutions because it's my first time doing this as well. So if we're going to inverse this, so inversing either the negative side. So I'm going to inverse the negative side first and see what result I get. This should give us a... Nope, you get a math error. You cannot negative in the inverse. So you go do minus 3 plus. So yep, there's only one solution. So, so inversing the positive solution only, you should get x equals 16.3 degrees Whew, almost done so that's almost done so looking back they want us they want the range between 0 and 360 okay so we're gonna need another fresh page for this one okay here we are fresh page so we've got x equals 16.3 degrees as the first solution now using the now to find the rest of the, the the values we need to use the cast diagram or the quadrant rule so the cast diagram is this so let's just make um simple car so let me just quickly do one here so we've got one line downwards so just plot just make it look like an xy axis okay now all we do is simply label each side with cars so we're going to start from the bottom right corner so it'll be c a s t for cost and because we've got sine we had a sine x earlier we need to work with sine and it was a positive result so it's going to be s here and a always stands for positive value so 
That's how it works. Okay, if you had a, if you worked with cos or tan, you'd be using C and A. If you worked with tan, you'd be T and A. Because this sign is S and A. A is standing for all. And they both have an angle of 16.3 degrees. To get the final solution, all you do is start from zero. So zero begins here. A half circle is 180, a full circle is 360. So the length, firstly, to here is obviously 16.3. Now the length from zero all the way here will be just, just before 180. So 180 minus 16.3. And this should give us, I should be able to do this mentally, shouldn't I? So it gives us 163.7 degrees. Okay, and that's it guys, that's all your solutions. Um, because it goes up 360, you can't really do more, because if you did another circle around, it will pass to 360, so it will be 376.3, and so on. So, yeah, and that's it. I mean, if you've got any other questions, please let me know. If you enjoyed the video, please give it one big fat like, and pass to your friends as well. Let everybody know, and um, I'll be doing more papers and more examples as time goes on. Other than that, I shall see you guys down the road, and ciao.